Now I want to talk a little bit about Range Selector and how we can use Range Selector to control our animation. Let's start by creating a new composition. I'll just use my regular 1920 by 1080, three seconds, and I'll name this one Range Selector. Take my Type tool and I'm just going to type in all caps. This is a title. I'm going into my Paragraphs panel and make it a centered. Hit the apostrophe key to bring up my title and action safe guides. I'm going to scale this up a little bit, or not scale, but I'm going to make the point size larger. Something like this. Now I'm just going to focus on a single property right now, scale. I'm going to add the scale animator and I'm going to scale this up about 200 percent. Now when you scale this way, it doesn't track it out automatically. So we end up with the letters overlapping like this. I'm going to open the tracking slightly, not all the way, but just a little bit by, hold, by selecting the type, holding the Option key and pressing the right arrow. Just maybe like that. Now I'm going to use Range Selector to actually create an effect where the type goes up and down. I'm going to start, so here's the Range Selector down here. I've already added my animator of scale. Open up Range Selector. I'm going to start with both of them at zero, the start and the end at zero. I'll move out to one second and make them both 100. And then I'm going to take one of them and offset it. So like take the start and I'll move it down to about 20 frames. And now look what happens when I drag through it. We get this cool kind of bouncy look. We could rotate the type in here as well. So I could add a, a rotation. At the beginning, you need a keyframe for rotation. I'll go to the end and I'll rotate it. I'll rotate it twice and let's see how that goes. Okay, that's actually not what I wanted. What I wanted was it to rotate around the y-axis. In order to do that, I have to enable per character 3D. I'll remove my rotation keyframes, make sure that's at zero, zero. At the beginning, I'll create a new keyframe. Now, actually, it's not Z. This Now that I've done the 3D, enable the 3D character, it's actually the Y that I want to rotate. When you create 3D, you're going to see the red, green, and blue arrows. Red is for the x-axis, green is for the y-axis, and the blue, which is hard to see, is for the z-axis. I want to rotate around this green arrow, so RGB, XYZ, so that'd be Y. I want to rotate around the Y. So I'll start out with it at zero. I'll move to my one second and give it two rotations. I'm just going to shorten my work area here by pressing N, and let's play this. Now we're not seeing it very much going really fast. Maybe I'll just change that to one and see if it becomes more pronounced. Still super fast. So I think the only thing I can do with it would be to slow it down, slow down the whole animation. Let's drag it out to two seconds. See how this goes. I need to move this start keyframe over, I think, to get a little bit more exaggeration. There we go. That's starting to get a little bit more interesting. All right, let's look at another option here. I'm going to duplicate this layer and hide it by turning off the eyeball. I'll press U to see my keyframes, and then I will delete all of my keyframes. And I want to change my scale back to 100. Actually, we can leave the scale at 200. I'm also going to change my position. So in here, I will add a property of position. 
Let's make the end 100 so we can see what's actually happening. So that's at 100. For position, I want to go on the Y and I move it off screen, off the top of the screen. Now I'm going to put a keyframe for start and end at 0 and 100. I'll go down to my 1 second and I'll change them both to 100. And now we get this. Feels kind of abrupt. And I also want to get it off frame farther. So I'll drag that up a little bit more. And I'll change this last keyframe to an easy ease in. And go in here and slow it down more. And let's see what that looks like. A little bit better, nicer. OK, and then you could add as many as you like. We could add, uh, for example, opacity. I'll start out at 0 keyframe, and then maybe at 10 frames, I will bring it into 100. And let's see how that looks. I'm going to move this opacity over a little bit. Let's see how this looks. I kind of like that better. All right, now I want to try one more where I use offset to control the animation. So I'm going to duplicate this again, turn off the eyeball, and open this one up and go down into the range selector. At the beginning, I'm going to start with 0 and 100%, and I will remove the keyframes. I'm going to add a keyframe for offset at 0, and then when I get out to 1 second, I'm going to increase this to 100. So this is going to give us a similar look, it's just a different way of controlling it. So that's just a basic introduction to using Range Selector. Range Selector can get rather complicated and rather confusing, particularly when you get into the advanced settings. I will point out right here, you could animate it by words or by lines. Let's see what happens if we do by words. See, the whole word will come in. That may be something useful to you at some, some point as well.